Hi, George here, and today we're going to be using guided edits to remove this background and replace it with a new background, just like that. Plus, just a little bit of stuff to improve it over in expert mode. Now, before I get into the training, make sure you take a look at my new channel for Photoshop Elements and other photo projects, and that's right over here. This is going to be just for this kind of project with no gaming videos. So if you want to see just pure clean photo projects, then make sure you check out this channel and subscribe. I'll be moving all of my new videos over to the new channel here pretty soon. So make sure you don't miss out on switching over to that channel. Okay, let's take a look at this project now. I'm just going to remove all of these layers up here. Just delete all that stuff. And here is our original photo. And we'll go over to guided edit right there. So I have my foot open right down here. You can see that in the photo bin. And here's the replace background tool right there. Now this works out pretty well if you have a good clean separation between your foreground and your background. It's not great for more difficult separations of background, but I cover that using the expert mode in other videos. But let's see how this works. If you have the right kind of photograph, this is a real fast and easy way to do this. So I'll click on replace background. It's going to automatically load our photo in for us, as you can see. On the right-hand side, you have several options in here for selecting your image. I would just go ahead and click on Select Subject and let Photoshop Elements figure that out for you. And then clean up the hair. Come down here to the Refine Brush. There we go. You can see there's the brush size. It should be fairly small. And then just brush right along the hair. Just a little bit, little short steps like that. And this will help get any little fine hairs right along that edge. So it's a nice little cleanup technique. It's not needed for any place else in your photo, just along the hair. So we'll just come down here and finish up like that. And there we go. Okay, now, second step over here is to import a photo. I'm going to scroll this down just a bit like that. There we are. You can use presets or no background or a color background down here if you want to. But I want a photo. And I have one here just some basic palm trees right there, choose place, and it places that photo behind your subject. And it's that fast and easy to do. And again, if you have a good clean separation, you can get a real nice effect very fast. Now just below our background option, we have the move tool. And this allows you to move your foreground subject around if you want to, to make your picture a little bit better. I think I'll put them over here this time. A little off to the left hand side, so you can see some of the background on the right hand side. Now below that is a refined edge brush again for cleaning up your edges. I personally don't like this one. It doesn't work out that well. It's better to do a new layer over in expert mode for that kind of fix. And also the auto match color tone down here. I haven't had good success with this one either. So we'll take a look at that again over in expert mode. But for just your basic background removal, this is a great tool. It's actually, as you can see, very fast and very easy. Click on the next button. And in here, if you're happy with it, just click on the save or save as, give it a new name. You can go over here to the quick edit, which I never use, or over into expert mode for additional work. We'll do that. There we go. And notice what we have over here. We have our original layer right back here. We have the layer here with our background image, which means at this point I could change that to a different background if I wanted to because it's on its own separate layer. And then we have our layer up here with our subject and a standard layer mask. Now, if you want to come in and do more refined edge, we're okay on this, but I'll show you the technique in here. Go over here to the layer mask side, hold the control key down, click on the layer mask side, and that then selects your subject. Once you have that selected, choose any of your selection tools. It doesn't matter which one. Come down to refine edge right down here. I have my feathering here at one pixel. Click on refine edge, and this tool will do a better job for you. I'll go ahead and I'll just redo the hair just a little bit right down here so we have something to work with. Just a little redo right in there. That's enough for this. And then come down here and change this to new layer with layer mask right there. Choose OK. And it gives you a new layer. So there's before and there's after. If you look at that little bit of the hair I did right in here, before and after, it's a little nicer, a little better job doing it this way. So you can come in and reuse that refined edge in expert mode and it does a better job. But I'll stick here with the one that we got from the guided edit. And let's just remove that layer up there. That's the New one, get rid of that. Okay, we do want to adjust our values a little bit in here and also adjust the color quality. There's a bit more of a bluish coloration here because all that blue in the sky. He's a bit warmer, so I want to cool him down just a little bit. And it's a little more contrasting than background, so I want to bring his contrast up as well. We'll do both of those with adjustment layers. Go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer. Let's do our color first. And this can be down here, photo filter. 
where it says use previous layer, check that, choose OK. And right here, choose one of your cooling filters. 82 is the normal one to use. And that just cools them off a little bit and that's a much better match. So there's before, there's after. We cooled them down and it now matches the scene better. You can adjust the amount right here, maybe bring that down a little bit, it's about 15. There we go, 15%. And that's a nice value. There's before and after. And that helps to blend them in with the color values. And then we also want to increase this contrast. So again, layer, come down to new adjustment layer. And right here, levels. Again, check that checkbox, choose OK. Here's our levels. Your black point is on the left-hand side, your white point on the right-hand side. Pulling those in is going to increase the contrast. Pulling in the left side is going to darken down the blacks just a little bit in there. The right side lightens up the lights. And with those two, we have a bit more contrast and that matches our photo better. You also can adjust the midtone values by moving your middle control. I don't need to in this particular instance. I think he's okay on the midtone, so I'll put that back to one. But there you go, just a real fast, a little bit of an adjustment to match the contrast better. Of course, always pay attention to your highlights and your shadows. His shadows on the right-hand side, the light is on the left-hand side. Same thing on the palm trees, shadow right-hand side, and the highlights left-hand side. If those were reversed, then he would look totally wrong. So make sure that your lighting angle is the same on your background and your foreground subject. Now, don't forget to go over and take a look at my brand new channel for all of these photo editing projects. And in just a little while, I'll be moving all of my new videos over to that channel. Basically, once I hit 1,500 subscribers over there, that would then become the complete home for this style of training for all of my Photoshop elements, Affinity Photo, Photoshop, all those different graphics and photo titles. Don't forget to check out my complete training course for Photoshop elements. The link for that is right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.